Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday, brought to you by Idaho Public Television and Montana PBS. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. This month in December, we are talking about coding. Carrie and I are both passionate about coding instruction for kids K through 12. And this month, we're going to spend each Tech Talk Tuesday session talking a little bit about coding and how you might be able to use it in your classroom. But we're going to start with explaining why it's important to implement coding in the classroom, why it's worth your time. And to do that, Carrie is going to get us started and share some of the research and some of the reasons why coding is such a great thing to do with students. Take it away, Carrie. Thanks, Nikki. Yeah, I am a huge coding nerd, and so I could talk about coding for hours, but I won't. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why we should teach kids to code. And uh, I'm going to show you in a few minutes some statistics about the business world. But when you think about coding, it isn't necessarily the act of coding itself that is so valuable, but it is the process of being able to code. And so coding teaches problem solving, perseverance, critical thinking. Um, gosh, there's a million other skills in addition to the math and the language and the, you know, the other um, content level skills that are in there. And I think there's a really great TED talk and I'm going to butcher her name, but I think it's Elena Beers. Um, she great, gave a really great TED talk about coding and she said, you know, we don't teach all kids to write with the expectation that every child is going to become an author, right? And we also don't teach kids to code with the expectation that every kid is going to become a computer coder or engineer. And then she talked about how just like with writing, it's the process where there is value, right? It's the working through the learning of the letters and the learning how to form those letters and all of those things that as educators, we know are really valuable and we teach every kid to write no matter what their occupation is gonna be. Coding is the same way. And in the career world today, coding, I cannot think of a career, that any career that does not use computers today in some form or another, even computers that do not require higher education. Even if you think about working um, in a fast food restaurant, they're using computers. And I know farmers that are using GPS um, and drones to check their crops and things like that. So even um, industries that are outside of higher education that you need college degrees for, computers are everywhere, kids are immersed. and so what I let me share my screen with you, because I think some of these statistics um, are really pretty eye opening. So this is probably the most recent study that I have been able to find so far. Um, and it's from 2015. So I would wager to guess that these statistics are even a little bit higher than what I'm going to share. But like I said, of its kind, this is the most recent one I've been able to find. And what they did was um, they did a study on uh, coding in the workplace and in industry. And um, they, uh, one of the things that they, that is a quote from there says, this modern language, meaning the language of coding is so central to business life that technology experts are saying today's kids will need to learn to code or they'll get coded, right? They'll get fired. They won't be able to keep up. But there were, these are some interesting tr statistics. So. When this study was done in 2015, 7 million job openings were in occupations that required coding. Um, and that corresponds to about 20% of the career track jobs, which are those jobs that are in the upper income quartile that make $15 or higher, right? So 20% of those required coding. Coding jobs are growing about 12% faster than the market average. And again, I'm I'm willing to guess that all of these stats are higher now, but um, this was from a few years ago. I love this one. Jobs that require coding skills pay an average of 22,000 a year more than jobs that don't. And then um, I thought that this was an interesting one as well, that half of the jobs, half 
of the jobs in the upper income quartile. So making greater than 57 a year are in occupations that require coding. And then um, this was another one that I went, oh my gosh. And this is why it even for me made even more of the case for coding. That half of all the programming openings are outside of the tech field. So I think sometimes when we think of coding, we think of technology, it's just going to be, you know, computer coders in a, in a room, like writing ones and zeros and doing all their code and that that's what a coding job is. But actually half of the job openings were in fields outside of technology. They were in finance. The top three were finance, manufacturing, and healthcare, actually, because the basic idea is that Every company uses a computer, and so every company needs somebody that can instruct the computers. So even if the kid isn't necessarily interested in the tech industry, but they are interested in healthcare, being able to, to code and program, you know, a computer in the healthcare industry is just as valuable. So I feel like this, these are some pretty staggering statistics. Um, if that doesn't alone make the case for coding, I don't know what else will, except that it, I just, I, I, um, it might have been in this study or it might have been a different study I read where it said the top three things that employers were looking for in employees were not skills. It was critical thinking, problem solving, and the ability to persevere through hard tasks. Yeah. Their general thought was, I can teach them the skills that go with our job. But I can't teach a 21 year old or you know 25 year old or whatever to have critical thinking, problem solving, and perseverance. And those were the top three things that they asked industry professionals. And again, those are three things that I think you have with coding. And then the other thing I'll just quickly say is, in addition to teaching kids coding, I'm a huge proponent for teaching young kids to code, starting at a really young age. PBS Kids, and we'll talk about this in. Um, further tech talks this month, but we have a, uh, PBS Kids has a program for kids five and older to start coding. And I always say, we don't teach kids to start reading in fifth grade. We don't teach kids math. We don't just start teaching them numbers and math in fifth grade. There's a reason that we teach them those foundational skills at a young age, because that's when their minds are still developing and and coding is the same way. Sometimes I think, and I know that, you know, I taught fifth, I taught fifth grade and some of those kids came to me and, and it's been a few years since I was in the classroom. So coding was getting new, was a fairly newish thing, but those kids had never learned to code. And so they would come to me in fifth grade and we would work on it, we would do it and they could pick up on it. But just like with reading and math, if the kids never learned any of those skills and then they come to fifth grade, it's a whole lot harder to learn it in the fifth grade than it is in kindergarten. So when we're talking about coding, you know, it's a new type of language and whether we love it or not, kids are immersed in computers. They love it. And computer coding allows the kids, Seymour, um, Seymour Papert said, it allows the kid to control the computer and program the computer instead of the computer to program the child. Um, and I love that quote because we think of often kids in screen time, right? We think of them staring mindlessly at YouTube videos or things like that. And, and this is screen time that is there, it's educational, they're learning, they're solving problems and they are creating. And so there's a million reasons why, but that those are some of the main sort of, I think teaching every kid to code is such a critical skill, whether they become coders or not, because at least they have the basic understanding of what it takes to get a computer to run and they understand. Um, and then the process of just really thinking through and, and trial and error and um, all of those other things that come with coding are so are such critical skills nowadays. Um, and so I think if you've been on the fence about it, I hope you'll just just jump in and do it. There's so many resources available now for coding to help you. We'll share some with you in later tech talks, I think as well. But I think for some kids, especially school might be the only place they're gonna get exposed to that ever because their parents are not 
probably going to be comfortable with that. Um, and so this may be the only place that those kids get exposure to that type of skill um, is is through school. And so starting it in school and starting it at a really young age, I just think is so critical to help kids be successful and computer literate in, in an age where computers are just, they're everywhere. So that's my, um, my soapbox plug for why <laughs> <laughs> coding, why we teach coding to kids and, and especially why we start them at a, at a younger age at, you know, five, six years old kindergarten kids can code, which sounds crazy and intimidating to some, to adults. And I get that, but, um, but kindergartners can do it and they love it. Yeah, I agree with that. And I actually, I taught coding when I taught kindergarten and first grade. And it was a, for me, I saw a real shift in the culture of my classroom and the willingness to persevere through hard things. It really did. Um, we were able to, we made time for coding every week and then used the language of our coding lessons to support perseverance and hard work in other parts of the day. And it really was um, for some kids that hadn't had an opportunity to feel successful at school yet, coding leveled that or gave them that place. Um, we don't need to be able to read to code. A lot of the programs use symbols and colors and make it really accessible. Um, and that's where we really saw kids that were used to being at the bottom and, and struggling um, suddenly found themselves at the top. Um, kids that hadn't ever tried it before and wouldn't have had an opportunity discovered this new interest and this new excitement um, and emerged as leaders in our classroom. Um, and I'll just share how we got started because I think maybe if teachers are watching this, they're thinking, oh, where do I even start? And we'll be spending a lot of time this month talking about coding and talking about resources for coding. All of the resources Cody, Carrie and I will share will always be free um, because there is a way to do this with a little bit of tech, with a lot of tech or with no tech in your classroom. And so the first place to start is going to this website called hourofcode.com. And this is um, every year, the December 6th through the 12th this year is considered Computer Science Week. And it's when we celebrate the Hour of Code. And it's just a challenge that it's extended to classrooms all over the world to see if you can have students spend an hour coding. And it doesn't have to be a consecutive hour. It can be 20 minutes here, 15 minutes there, five minutes there, whatever fits into your school day. Um, but it's just an opportunity to get kids excited and interested and, and to start with a, a very obtainable challenge. And then hopefully you as a teacher will see how this fits with your classroom and where it, and where you might implement it on a regular basis. So you go to this website, you can join everybody, you can fill out this form so that you're officially registered. You can do that, you can do it without doing this, but I think it's kind of fun. Um, and then it'll kind of, it'll place your, your place on the map. You can see we've got lots of schools um, have already joined on, but we can go to our states, Idaho and Montana over here. Not as many. We've got some schools in Montana and Idaho, but we could definitely add more <laughs> to that map. Um, sign up and then you'll get emails about you know what you need to do. This site also has a lot of great ideas, lesson ideas, places to get started, but it's also going to have some certificates that you can print out for kids after they've finished the code, um, give you some information for how to share this with your families and with the other teachers in your school. So this session was really meant to just give you a quick overview of why coding is important and where you might get started. Tune in later this month. Carrie and I are going to share high tech and low tech tools and strategies for using coding um, so that you can use it this month and every month. Anything else to share, Carrie, about coding? Nope. We'll also share with you how to integrate it into content areas as well. So be following those um, this month because I'm a huge proponent also of not coding just for coding sake, but figuring out ways to integrate it into your content areas. So absolutely. Cool. So, well, that's it for this session of Tech Talk Tuesday. We hope you learned more about coding and that you'll join us next time. Thank you.